we got a raccoon right here today. And it's gonna be great, guys, because we're gonna eat it. What in the world? What is good, Greg Gang? Today we're doing a video that I can promise is going to be epic, and you have to finish the entire video. We are going no other than raccoon trappings. No, no, well, not trappings, but you get the point. I'm from Kentucky, I don't know how to talk. But this is the tool we're going to be using. This is a dog-proof coon trap. Arguably the number one coon trap in all of America. Alright, so I'm about positive I've already shown you how a raccoon trap works in the past, but I'm going to show you again since that's kind of what the entire video is about. This one here is a brand I forgot the name of so it's just too bad they're basically all the same so I set it like this kind of simple in a way there we go it is set and now how does a coon set off this trap well first you got to put bait down in this tube it's really hard to see but there's a little ring in there whenever the coon's digging in here trying to get the food out he accidentally pulls the trigger and it closes down on its hand. Now, in my opinion, this is one of the most humane raccoon traps. Obviously, the cage trap's a little bit more humane, but this one's really not far off. It just holds his hand. Super effective. By far my favorite. And it's super small, too. And in this video, we're all going to be setting a couple of the cage traps, but these are so much smaller. They're so small, I can, like, fit 50 of them in a bucket. Once, my uncle, he actually fit, like, 4,000 of these in two five-gallon buckets. It was crazy. The news was here and everything. But first, we got to set these up for trapping. And the way I set them up, I don't know if anyone else that sets them up this way and I really don't know why. Okay guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this trap to be able to wrap it around a tree and it holds a raccoon. Now what I'm using is three 30 seconds cable and then I got these little whatever these are and it kind of clamps down on it so I'm gonna put it on there attach it right here to the swivel. Give it a decent amount of room that way it can actually swivel if the coon wants to move around. Smack that baby with a hammer. Then we're going to make it big enough to wrap around. That should be perfect. Kingdom. Perfecto. Then we're going to do the same thing and make another loop. It's very simple, very effective. Now you want to make this second loop big enough for your trap to slide through because that's exactly what's going to be happening. And then smack it in the next week. And now we're done, guys. We walk up to a smaller tree, wrap it around, stick this through it. Woo! Whoop. It holds it on the tree until I can come back. Coons aren't exactly super crazy, so this works just fine. And it always has. It's never failed me. Except for the time where the, the coon like climbed the tree. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I'm going to do a bunch more like this and I'll get back with y'all in a minute. Actually, I'll get back with y'all right now. For bait, we're using dog food as a filler to like fill up the tube. But to make it smelly, we're using sardines. And I got some hot cake syrup because... I found it, and I think it'll work good. Raccoons really aren't that picky. They just, they kind of just do whatever they want to. As long as you got food, they're happy. Hey Siri, play Circle of Life. Daryl, what are you doing? Daryl, if you want to come with me, just go up here in the front seat, babe. You can come with me. You just got to come up here and get up the front seat. You can't sit back here. Ain't no seat, babe. You fall out your heart yourself. You're a pretty chicken, Daryl. Thank you. All right, brother. What we're going to do is I have a trap over here already. What we're going to be doing is just resetting it. I actually caught a raccoon here earlier in the year, and then some stray dogs came through and quartered it out for me. Yeah, I don't appreciate that. Just in case you're watching this stray dogs, but that's okay. We're going to reset it. I know there's some more raccoons here. I had a trail camera on that tree for a long time, and I don't know why, but I took it down. But yeah, I do know for a fact there's plenty more raccoons here. The trap's fine, so we're going to leave it. We'll come over here, get this, and then I can't really decide if I want to go with these or if I want to go with maple syrup for this first one <laughs> okay i'm going to sort it y'all just going to sit right here because i don't have a cameraman and i'm too lazy to pack a tripod back and forth across a whole stinking mountain but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and set this first i may put a little dog food in here just to make sure it does get under the trigger just a little common sense courtesy here if there is no bait under the trigger the raccoon has no reason to pull your trigger but yeah the trap is set i'm gonna push it down to the ground right here mm. i'll bait it up a little bit higher give him something to work for don't worry if you spill some that's okay. Just like that. That ought to be good. I filled it about 75% of the way up. I'm going to fill the rest 50% up with this. Oh, yeah. And the juice, critical. Critical. They sell sardine juice for 50 bucks a gallon in the Pacific Island of Yee. Yee. But anyway, since I got about 11 sardines, I'm going to put half of them. So I'm going to put six in here. 
quick map. Hey, if y'all want to send me some in fan mail, we had a little trend going on last year where people would send in sardines. Hey, send me some sardines, bro. I need them. Bill box in the description, boys. And the mail times are being posted on the second channel, Kendall Gray 2. Just in case y'all didn't know that. But yeah, looking real nice, real nice. Keep the second half back here in the back and just hope it doesn't spill. Yeah, that's a bad situation right here. I'm going to spill these somehow. But as for a finish set, this right here is what I consider a perfect raccoon dog proof set. The sardines attract him here. The dog food keeps him here. Let's go on to the next one. Also, earlier in the video, whenever I said we're going to set a cage trap, guess what? I lied. We ain't doing it. I don't have to know what I'm doing right now, but we doing it. Let me just say this. I've got like nine dog proofs back here. There's a 96 and a half percent chance I catch something by in the morning. Hey, baby saying, kill dude, do you only catch raccoons in a dog proof? Absolutely not, Joey. Why would you why would you assume that? We can catch raccoons, we can catch possums, we can even catch a skunk or a gray fox if they get lucky enough with their toenails. But yeah, most of the time you're gonna catch a raccoon or an opossum. Those two, kind of a toss-up. Also, at this next set, I'll show you some signs that you can look for if you're trying to find raccoons to trap. Because raccoons live a lot of places, but they don't exactly live everywhere. For example, they live in my cousin's attic, but they don't live in a field. Alright guys, so I was thinking about where I could set this next trap, and then I looked up here and I found something kind of interesting. And I'm still kind of confused as to what it really is. So I seen this, and it kind of looks like a burn mark. But I don't know if it is a burn mark. I mean, it kind of looks like a burn mark. Whenever I first seen it, I was like, oh, that's a fat mark. <laughs> and you may be wondering, can I do, why is a tree fat? Let me just tell you, Daryl, listen up. If you find a big den tree, which is actually where raccoons live, the bottom of it, the hole will be black like that. Because every time the raccoon crawls up in the tree, some of the grease off his fur packs onto the tree. And it'll literally turn black. That's what I thought that was. Now that I get up looking at it, it kind of looks what? like something burned it. It's probably like a weird beetle or something. Some beetle that like can like create fires and stuff. Kind of jealous because I can't even start a fire and like a beetle's over here doing it. But yeah, I know raccoons live here. I just got to find their den tree. Let's go find it. Shouldn't be that hard. Or find their trails. I don't care. The key for looking for a big den tree is looking for a big, big tree that has scratch marks on the side of it. And a big enough hole for a raccoon to go through. They can fit through small holes, so don't be too surprised. Also, tell me how this camera is doing. Because I'm using a different camera today, and I'm considering using this in full time. So tell me below, guys, because I need to know. Okay, guys, just set this trap right here. You can kind of see it. It's right there locked onto that tree. The most important part is where we are. Right now, we're on top of a ridge, which is always good for raccoons. Good natural raccoons. If I catch a coon up here, he's non-gmo okay he's straight up daniel Boone style if we caught one down by a cornfield he's probably been eating some crops i like to call those coons willy wonka coons because they just sit around and eat all day which is not a problem okay i love willy wonka i was just driving through here to set the next trap and i found some perfect signs now i know my camera's purple right now and i actually have no idea why but we're just gonna deal with it i guess if you look closely on that tree bark you can see that it's worn and there's a trail worn in it right through there over on that side it's not worn over here it's not tried there's literally a trail where something has climbed this tree with its claws and slowly but surely wore out a path now that could obviously be squirrels possums or raccoons but we're raccoon trapping we're just gonna boost her go here and say that that is a raccoon now it wouldn't be a bad idea to set a raccoon trap here but i think there's an even better spot right up here we'll set okay guys so i actually came down to the river in this spot and i set a few extra coon traps that y'all didn't i didn't actually show you up there on that mountain i literally have been set for like eight days I haven't got a single coon i did have one mess with it but nothing really impressive for eight days at least here i came down to the river i identified coon tracks i set it in the best spot possible we got a raccoon right here today. And it's gonna be great, guys, because we're gonna eat it. But right here, right now, raccoon, he's right there. He's hoping that we don't see him. We got him in a dog proof. Y'all have already seen all about that. But right now, he's just hoping that we don't see him. I'm gonna act like I don't see him and see what he does. I'm gonna act like I'm coming over here. I'm coming over here. I don't see him. He's not giving away his position. He's being kind of smart. But yeah, I just came down here by the river. I saw some raccoon tracks. I tracked him up this trail, and I figured that'd be the perfect spot. And good night, he is huge. He's not the biggest raccoon I've ever seen, but he's a big one. He's kind of wrapped up a little bit in the chain. Let me get the stick out. 
he can move a little bit better. You may look at that and say that he chewed that up, but that's actually from a beaver. It was here yesterday. But I set this trap yesterday. Guys, I'm proud of myself. I'm going to show you how to cook up an amazing grilled raccoon. Look at him trying to climb the tree. He's a little way down because he is, you know, tied at the bottom. But that's okay. That's kind of what it's made for. <laughs> yeah, guys, we're going to go ahead. This guy's not being too aggressive right now, which is good. We're going to go ahead and dispatch this guy. Then we're going to go ahead and get him cooked up. <laughs> In the last video, I actually told you that if you bought one of these three shirts on the website, you could actually pick out a free face mask and keep it. Also, I wanted to let you know that we have a new fishing fanny pack out. It's a brand new color. I really like this one. Restocking right before fishing season because this thing is a lifesaver. We also got blue pliers and a new knife sharpener. Let's get back to the video. Can we grab one of the guys off first? Right, guys, we're going to go ahead and skin this guy up. We're going to skin him both for the meat and fur. Mainly the meat, though, honestly. So I'll hang it up from the gambrel to start. Maybe in a minute. I gotta fix this. I need a new game. This ain't working too good. There's a chair over there. It may or may not be a bad idea. Kinda? Almost? All right, we're gonna go ahead and hang up this coon and start uh, cutting it up. First thing we gotta do is get the skin off of it. Then we can have the entire skinless body to actually work with the meat part. You're not gonna be seeing much of the skin stuff because that's not what the video is about. We're putting it in a bag and we'll do it later. This video is about turning this thing into a treat for your favorite or maybe least favorite guest. But yeah, here's a cool montage of me skinning it. All right, guys, so we're about halfway done with it. Accidentally put a massive hole in the fur here, but that's okay. One thing I did want to say about this coon is that he's pretty old. Like, his teeth were pretty wore down. And you can see that he's really fatty. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that fat here in a minute. But as for now, we're going to skin this down. And we're going to catch you back on the table in just about... All right, boys, here we go. We got him frailed out like a pig. Messed up his face a little bit on the skinning process. I've never been good at that. But right here, right now, we have a raccoon basically fully skinned. And we're going to go ahead and take off the best part. One thing that you need to keep in mind is that fat is really weird on wild animals. Wild animals, their fat likes to taste gamey. I don't know how to describe it, but it's not good. It's like, it's like a freezer burnt hot dog. That's what it tastes like. You want to go ahead and get all the fat off, but not until you go ahead and quarter it up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the back legs, maybe the shoulders and front legs, and then I'm going to get this right here. Maybe chop that into two pieces. We'll have six good pieces. And the tools that we're going to be using today is one, the KG pocket knife. This is just a straight up everyday carry pocket knife. Literally took it out of my pocket from hunting, chopped up a coon with it, skinned it just like perfectly. Now I'm going to come in here, slice and dice this thing, stinking quarter it up for the feast of a uh, Beauty and the Beast. And then of course we got the KG hatchet and I chopped off the feet with this I'm going to use this to get in there and hit some of the bones real good good for the woods even better for the slaughter house I guess. Anyway, let's get going. I'll start with the shoulder because they seem pretty easy. Raccoon meat's good. I've done one catch and cook before and I just threw it in a crock pot. This one's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be really good. We shot him with a 17 HMR so I'm going to be looking for bullet fragments because they're probably in here. This front shoulder is not connected by like any joints so it should come off really nice. Boom! Shoulder number one in the pan. I'll go ahead and get this guy completed and we'll head on in the kitchen. We can go ahead and get to cooking this guy. Okay guys, the time has come. We cooked it at one hour and 30 minutes for 300 degrees. We're going to see what happens. It looks really good. Also, what I didn't tell you guys is that uh, I actually came out here and uh, drizzled some maple syrup over top of it. Now we turn off the Wi-Fi group. Beep, 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 boop, boop. Now let's go eat it. Hopefully it tastes good. It looks decent. You agree? Yeah, I think it looks good. All right, cool. All right, guys, looking at it, this is the neck. That's the part I'm going to eat. Here's one of the front legs. Abram has one of the front legs. How, how does it look? It looks really good. Does it? It's supposed to be like barbecue. It's supposed to just fall off the bone. We'll see about that. Go ahead and take your first taste, and then I'll go ahead and take mine. That's right on the scapula, so some of that may be hard. <laughs> it's bone. I know that mine looks pretty juicy. That right there is probably going to be the best part for me. Right that neck meat. <laughs> it's looking kind of tough. It's supposed to be soft. I don't know what I did wrong. Mm. Hmm? It's really tough, but it is good. Is it? 
Yeah, I mean, tastes good. All right, so I'm gonna go for a little bit different cut of meat. He went for the leg, I'm going for the neck. Hopefully this should be softer. Ooh. The neck meat may be where it's at. Maybe you should give me a little piece. I have to give you a piece of the neck. What in the world? I think it's still bleeding. Really? Yeah. I think it is. Mine's not. Mine is. Let me see. It's literally still bleeding. I don't know if that's blood or not. I what else would it be? What's the, the, could be the glaze like running down. Can I die from this? Possibly. You could die from a lot of things, so. I know. What do we do? Eat the, eat the leg part. Now this part better be done, like, come on, man. If a little leg like this can't cook in an hour and a half, then maybe it just ain't meant to be. But it does look all right. See, this part looks pretty good. That part tastes decent. Have I perfected it yet? No. Have I made it taste good? No. <laughs> but you could probably feed a small tribe of Indians on this, and they probably wouldn't get too mad. So honestly, in my book, that's pretty good. Here's the thing, guys. If you want to buy this shirt, the goat shirt, we've restocked them. But even better than that, we have restocked, for the first time, goat socks. These have Chad literally on them, but Chad passed away after I actually ordered them. But yeah, if you want to pick up some of these socks, they're probably the coolest socks I have, or the shirt, kennelgrade1.com slash shop. First link in the description. Help support the channel and pay for the possible hospital bills if this meat was undercooked. So we need to go to the hill. It's like eating a tennis shoe. <laughs> That's a pretty good comparison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got blood coming out of the neck, so it's probably not done. Well, if you got actual blood coming out of the neck, then your problem's not that you cooked it a short amount of time. It's that you left blood in. What do you mean? Because meat doesn't have blood. What? The stuff that's in meat is not actually blood. It's like muscle fluid. So what are you saying? I don't know. Don't put that part in the video. <laughs>